All right, uh, we'll go back now to one of our top stories uh, for today. Of course, uh, that is, uh, you know, the stance uh, that uh, the ANC took today, uh, of course, uh, within the NEC meeting, which was taking place in Boxburg. And for more on this, uh, we're now joined by uh, Professor John Stremlau from the Department of International Relations at the University of Witwatersrand, and he's here to help us uh, dissect South Africa's stance uh, within uh, the Middle East uh, conflict. Uh, Professor, thank you so much uh, for joining joining us uh, here on uh, the late edition. Of course, one would ask, uh, when it comes to the images we saw today coming out uh, from uh, Boxburg, and uh, we saw the, the president of the ANC, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, you know, being flanked uh, by his NEC at the same time, also addressed in regalia, and also they're reaffirming their stance as the ANC, saying that uh, within this conflict, they are in support of the Palestinians. That's correct. It is always very careful to say that it's the Palestinian people with which South Africa identifies and is supportive. There is never any mention that I'm aware of, of the various factions that are fighting with each other within Palestine, namely Hamas and Fatah. Rather, it is with the solidarity of the Palestinian people. And that's a very important distinction yeah. because if South Africa is going to play a role in brokering a peace or enforcing and monitoring a peace as Cyril Ramaphosa did in the Northern Ireland conflict, with, along with Atasari from Norway, that they, they are Finland, that they, um, successfully reassured the IRA that South Africa would have their back. And in this case, the South Africans could have the back of the Palestinian people in a push for a two-state solution, which as everyone knows is the only solution for this terrible, terrible situation. And Professor, one would say that uh, the stance of the ANC uh, is particularly nothing new. And you're right, they were very strategic uh, in their wording, you know, not even making mention of uh, Hamas uh, within that, uh, you know, the reaffirming uh, of their support uh, for the Palestinian people. At the same time, also saying that, uh, you know, their support uh, is because of uh, what, uh, you know, uh, South Africa uh, went through in the past when it comes to South Africa's apartheid past. Yes, and that's a very important point. But let's keep in mind that in South Africa, um, th there were leaders who were strong enough to take risks for a settlement. There are no such leaders evident so far in the case of Palestine and Israel. Um, there was an ownership that, that uh, Mandela and de Klerk expressed and they said, we will solve this problem for ourselves. There is nothing like that in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. And there was effective solidarity on the part of the international community by the time of the late 90s and the passing of the Cold War to, to support the apartheid um, removal and the aspirations of the majority of the South African people. So far, this has not been the case. However, this terrible terrible situation that is now becoming a humanitarian disaster for the palestinian people will maybe galvanize effective international support for a two-state solution and that will provide the vision for a different kind of middle east than what we've become accustomed to when these bloody revenge wars over religion, which is a social convention, just like any other historical convention about uh, about uh, origins of, of, of humanity. We're all God's children. And I thought it was very significant that Anthony Blinken quoted uh, the first words of Genesis to show that uh, God brought light to all peoples. Mm. And uh, Professor, when it comes to South Africa's stance and its position uh, and its relationship uh, with the West, uh, today's announcement uh, by the ANC and President Cyril Ramaphosa, what does it mean um, for its relations uh, with the West? Well, you know, <laughs> the 
South Africans and the Americans particularly have lots of disagreements uh, all the time. And uh, we've just been through the Lady R incident, for yeah. example. But they managed to find uh, common ground and a, a, a relationship which is subject to frank disagreements. But in getting a peace settlement for Israel and Palestine that's fair and just to the peoples of both countries, I think the South Africans are very, very well positioned to protect the interests of the Palestinian people, while the U.S. says that it has Israel's back, but really quietly diplomacy <laughs> might well um, find a way to bridge that gap. And I think South Africa could play a very, very important role in defending the rights of the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, as uh, South Africa shows its support uh, for the people of uh, Palestine, one would also ask, uh, Professor, uh, when it comes to this stance, you know, uh, you know, one would say, uh, can we even question uh, that uh, South Africa may be isolated because of the position uh, it has <coughs> taken in support of the people of Palestine? Well, you know, the South Africa is a complex democracy, but it is a democracy that's welcomed and recognized the world over. And so therefore, <clears throat> it, it speaks with or could speak with certain moral authority. Now, in the near term, Cyril Ramaphosa has a terribly difficult election coming up in 2024, as does Joe Biden. But Naladi Pandor, the foreign minister, and Anthony Blinken, the foreign minister of, uh, of the U.S., have a very good personal working relationship, I understand, from everybody who knows that relationship. And they may be able to yeah, either, de either themselves or, or, or uh, appoint representatives who could broker between the Palestinians and the Israelis if we can get beyond the right wing radicals that are dominant in the um in the faction that is now ruling uh israel and get beyond the uh the the, the, the two ineffective parties hamas and uh fatah in the case of of uh palestine now i realize that this is asking a lot but we're on the verge of a massive invasion that is going to create a humanitarian disaster that will be the preoccupation of international relations the world over, I think, mm. in the next uh, a few weeks. And so, therefore, I think that uh, there may be an opportunity and, and chance favors the prepared mind. So I would urge South Africa to continue to support the Palestinian people and to make that support known and, and reassuring to the Palestinians who may find the way to come up with some new leadership, just as the Israelis need to come up with some new leadership. This was a disastrous failure of, of the, South Af of, of the uh, Israeli government to prevent this invasion. And it is not a reflection of the sentiment, I think, of the majority of the Palestinian people who want peace and justice and independence and we should have a two-state solution. Yeah, and uh, Professor, you know, as much as we talk about the stance of South Africa and being quite clear, saying that uh, they are in support of Palestine, what do you make of uh, the stance of the U.S. Uh, showing their support for Israel? It's very difficult to say right now what's going on behind the scenes. I'm very interested in the fact that um, Blinken made it out to Israel, but also to Jordan, where he met President Abbas from Fatah, and he talked to the King of Jordan, who was identified with a two-state solution. He's going on to Saudi Arabia, to Egypt, to UAE, and to Qatar, and all of those are stakeholders in this uh, uh, very complex and very bad situation in between Israel and Palestine. At least Hamas has focused everyone's mind on the problem that is the apartheid state of Israel, and they, 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 no one condones the civilian killing, and Niladi Pandor, Dr. Pandor, doesn't condone any civilian killing, but the humanitarian disaster within uh, Gaza is looming, 
and something has to be done and so maybe this crisis will have a silver lining i don't know but i think that south africa is right to stand up and make its its loyalties clear but also keep diplomatic channels open to the u.s to the europeans to the people in the region and look for an opportunity where they can monitor any peace agreement on behalf of the Palestinians, as Cyril Ramaphosa did for the IRA in the Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland. I realize there are different cir circumstances, but it's a good precedent to remind ourselves of. All right, Professor, thank you so much uh, for that insight. That is uh, Professor John Stremlau uh, from the Wits University and the Department of International Relations.